Yeah, this is our premiere, and um, I just wanted to introduce Nicholas. He's over there in Utah, and I'm over here in Mexico, so the screen's going to switch back and forth between us, but say hello to Nicholas. Well, hello, everyone. <laughs> I was over tech this whole retreat, and I have my, friend, my dear friend Alexa helping me out for my show right now. And it just has been just, ah, oh, it's been an incredible day. Just hearing everyone share Calico this morning with Lila and then, uh, and then Anne and Kirsten and you know, Emily and Jeffrey and so many. And I just, I felt so lifted up. But yeah. So this feels wonderful to be here with you all. And as Andy said, we've known each other from high school and I don't think any of us, you know, any of us in general and especially I think Andy and myself thought, you know, this would happen to us kind of devoting our lives to this deep healing purpose. But it just seems like, <laughs> it just seems like life or spirit, Jesus, whatever word works best for you, just had another plan. And for me, I really felt like, at least at the beginning, I didn't feel like I chose it consciously. It felt like it kind of happened to me and quite out of nowhere. Um, and I'm sure I mean, Andy and I will be sharing just a lot of, uh, just kind of how it's gone for us and then, you know, just how the parables have kind of met each other and just how it's gone from, you know, the old to new uh and pass to the vast <laughs> and yeah i just yeah i think it's great because a prayer of andy and i especially once we kind of ended up in the same community was was actually to kind of heal any of these blocks of friendship that friendship itself is a concept that kind of blocks you from true connection because you know what is a friendship except all these ideas of how you should be with someone? And I know Andy and I, as we both kind of stepped into this spiritual path and we'll share more about kind of those stories and parables. Yeah. It's just been like, we've just wanted something deeper. And as, as we've gone, you know, deeper, yeah, we just wanted to let go of any of these old, kind of past associations with each other. And that's just been our prayer. Like, you know, when we work on something or even preparing for the show, just kind of really sharing all our thoughts and not kind of deferring to one or another and just really staying open, like having the whole process be a prayer. And that's kind of the way through that. That's, you know, modern mysticism. It doesn't have to look a certain way, but it just means that you're willing to um, let go, like release all concepts because really none of them serve and just, and it's really not us that does it personally. That's where you know, life, or I like to say it's Jesus it's in my life. I love Jesus. <laughs> and I've got two Jesuses in front of me while I'm doing this show. But um, yeah, it's, it's really, it's like giving my life over to Jesus. And he's the one that helps me awaken, you know, heal all these past associations and these concepts and, um, and yeah, that I'm not in control of it. And yeah, so I just, just wanted to share a bit of that. And, and yeah, just for me, it's, uh, it's been a huge kind of surprise this whole life. Just, yeah, it's, it feels kind of surreal at times, but I mean, I grew up in, I guess what my family would call Christian, but it was more about like just something we would put out there. It was more like we celebrated Christmas. Like we didn't, I didn't really grow up with my parents saying, okay, you got to study this theology. You got to go to Sunday school, you know, any of that. And that, I feel really grateful for that. Actually. I just, it kept me really more in this blank slate for me to find uh, what would resonate with my heart. And I never would have thought it would have gone this way. I mean, if anything, I remember exactly, being eight years old, climbing a tree and like praying to God to help me fly, like give me superpowers. <laughs> That's what I thought God was like this, you know, this creator. I didn't think it was maybe some man, but someone who would give me, uh, basically grant me wishes. 
And that's, well, I think that's about <laughs> But well, I was just thinking of prayer, and prayer feels like a superpower to me now. But um, yeah, so I kind of grew up in that context. And, and then even when I entered high school, because of my... Uh, actually, could you put gallery <laughs> For now, um, yeah, just what was this? <laughs> there, yeah. Well, I like I like what you said about superpowers, because <laughs> regarding superpowers, I feel like when we were all young, you know, we always looked up to the superheroes because they seem to be extraordinary or beyond human. And I feel like somewhere in our minds, in all of our minds, there's this thought that it's like, there has to be something more than this. There has to be something um, much more expansive than this limitation that I feel like life is. So I feel like that's almost where everyone's journey starts. It's some kind of thought in your mind where it's like, there has to be something more, or there is another way to live, which is what we have been putting on the modern mystics pictures. And, um, yeah, so I just feel like I, I personally would never have decided to come on the spiritual path. Um, it, it feels like it wasn't my decision at all, although on another level it definitely was. But the reason why I say that is because it seemed to start because all this anxiety and panic attacks started happening to me in high school. And I didn't understand it and I didn't know what to do. And then it seemed to go on for six months until one day I just, I just couldn't take it. I was like, okay, I could kill myself, but that doesn't feel that good. Uh, what are my other options? Distract away. That doesn't really last long either. So I don't know. I don't really have any options. And then at that point, when I know that I don't personally have any more options, it's like, okay, there's a call for help to something greater than me. Even though I didn't believe in God, I didn't really believe in a higher power or anything but you know when you're really down on your knees and you're out of your options then it's like help me something you know so <laughs> the next day I think after I made that prayer in my mind I was walking through my house and I saw a book on the stairwell um, a new earth by Eckhart Tolle and I don't just randomly go around my house picking up books and starting to read them but I did this time and I know it's because I had some kind of tingling in my heart to pick it up so I did and uh, I started reading it and yeah, it just started to really blow my mind and it put me in touch with just a niggling thought of maybe there is something more than this. And so that seemed to be how I got into the journey. And, um, and now looking back, I find it really helpful that six month period of anxiety and depression and panic attacks, even though in the moment it was terrible, but it motivated me to go somewhere else in my mind and to seek an answer that otherwise I would never have looked for in my life because I had no interest in spirituality. And because that was part of my self-concept actually, to not be interested in spirituality. And yeah, just about the self-concept, I feel like once I had this prayer um, to the Holy Spirit, which is like the higher self, then the Holy Spirit will then guide you to do different things and different tasks and projects, which ultimately lead to healing your mind as you listen to that voice and continue to do, to do the projects. And this is one of those projects that the Holy Spirit has guided me to do, a, a show with Nicholas, my friend from high school. And I find it really healing and helpful because, you know, we seem to have complementary ego dynamics, um, kind of like Helen Shuckman and Bill Thetford, you know, uh, David, <laughs> David says, it's really funny that term complementary ego dynamics, but Jesus actually uses it to say it's like a, it's like a partnership or a brotherhood where um, the dynamics of the seemingly two egos actually play out in a way that's most helpful for both of the, both of them to heal. And that's what it looks like right now. And so, um, and so, yeah, even something like this shirt that I'm wearing, like, I really love this shirt, but it's completely against my self-concept. And, uh, and 
<laughs> but I ended up really loving it. So I felt guided to wear this today for our show uh, in the spirit of that. Uh, beautiful. Well, I like that you said the kind of the brotherhood because, I mean, as I shared a little bit about it on my Facebook Live broadcast, um, I think it's just, <laughs> uh, just that, you know, when this whole direction came in for this community with extending and we, you know, we could all feel it. Like I had just come back, I think the night before, the day before for, for like four, four months or so of traveling. And I felt kind of extended out and at least that was my thought. <laughs> and, but you know, this direction was coming in very strong. And, and so I was, I was like, okay, well, if this is what it's meant to be. And I was guided here. Then I, this must be something for me, but I, I had no idea what it was. And so I just tried to keep my mind open and, and it wasn't until the next morning, right before we had our morning meeting where I was just kind of sitting on the couch just a few minutes before the meeting would start. And I just, I was in prayer and, and yeah, it was like a minute or two in that I immediately heard actually the, it was the first name of the show was brothers in Christ. Cause I, I thought of, I thought of you, Andy, and I'd share that with you just like, Oh yeah. Like, I don't know, not think of that before. Like, this is something we've talked about. And actually, even part of, like, our stories or parables was just, like, even things we did several years ago was was all to kind of set up this, which actually has now been provided effortlessly from the Spirit. And just everything else that we've been experiencing, just, it was like, before we were struggling to try and get it, and it just wouldn't work. And I know you have a lot of <laughs> parables of, of trying a uh, business thing and, and it just over and over not working. And I think for me, it just kind of fell out a little quicker, but I knew I was in the same path. And I feel like we've just been getting shown ourselves in our own experience that it's like, no, whatever's meant to be will, will be provided. I think it was a quote someone shared from you recently, what's guided is provided. Uh, that's what Kirsten shared. And that's, that's really been my experience. Like if I'm just willing and open to to as best I can not decide what my life should look like moment to moment, then I'm actually effortless, effortlessly guided. And, and it's actually like, I couldn't have planned it better. Everything that's happened to me since kind of giving, it's just been like miraculous. Like I'll share more after, but there's so many examples, even having my best friend from high school end up joining me in this, in this community and in, in this steep spiritual path. I mean, it's like, I, it's so exciting for me. <laughs> it's like, what more could you ask for? But, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it really is true. What's guided is provided. And I know it's like, for me, the reason why I seem to take so long to really give my full yes to the Holy Spirit to go on the spiritual path is because I thought I knew what I wanted and I thought I knew how to get it. So I remember when I was like 12 years old, I was watching Batman Begins. And I remember this one scene where he's a little boy, uh, Batman's a little boy and he's with his parents on the train and they're just driving by and his dad points at the tower, uh, Wayne Industries or something like that. And uh, he's like, look son, that's our, that's our building or business or whatever. And when I watched that when I was 12, I had this feeling of like enormous magnitude and I guess it was a distorted miracle impulse looking back at it. But I thought something in me was like, I really want that magnitude. And so I'm going to do what basically what they're doing in this movie. I want to be like Batman and I want to have a huge building in the middle of a city and where it's like obvious and I want like millions of dollars because I thought that was magnitude. Because in my mind, I was like, okay, I really resonate with this idea of magnitude. But then it's like the ego's filter distorts that and says, yeah, I'll help you get there. Just make millions of dollars get your tower in the middle of New York City like Donald Trump. And, you know, you'll, you'll get to that magnitude. But it's a complete trick. And that's the thing. We really don't know what we want. Like we think we do. So that's one of the blocks in my mind, at least, that I saw when it comes to following the Holy Spirit's guidance, it's like, well, I think I know what I want. So why would I listen to you? Because it seems like you're bringing me to something that I don't want sometimes. So, so yeah, it gets a little, but really it's, it's about trust and it's about realizing that, oh, actually I don't know what I want. 
I've tried all these different things. Like I tried, I tried to become a multimillionaire for three years and, and uh, while reading the course, which is a complete conflict of interest in my mind because I, I wanted to be the multimillionaire so that I could buy this dream car that I really liked for some reason, a Lamborghini. And I thought that would bring me some kind of magnitude feeling just like, and it was just another distortion. It was just another distraction. But, but yeah, what I did eventually was I kind of realized that actually this isn't it. And I felt so frustrated at some point that, that I really had to face my mind because I knew I was distracting away with the business and everything that eventually I, yeah, I kind of went on my knees and I was like, okay, I'll at least I'll trust you, but you have to show me that whatever you're guiding me to is what I want. And so with a little bit of trust, I took my first step and I said, yes, Holy spirit, you have me. And then, um, and then I was guided every step of the way from there. And through experience, through following guidance, you see that actually the Holy Spirit's plan is what you want. So I know Frances Seuss shared this and it was really helpful for me. And she said, um, she said, whenever I'm being guided to do something that I think I don't want to do, I tell the Holy Spirit, okay, Holy Spirit, um, your plan is for happiness. So if I'm following your guidance, then I'm supposed to be happy. And so, and then she just was completely open and she would take those steps. And then she would indeed see time and time again that when she followed the guidance, she experienced happiness. And that kind of builds like a convincing job and a trust in your mind. And when you keep doing that, you just see that, wow, the Holy Spirit's plan really actually works. And my limited perspective looking through like a little keyhole actually isn't that great. And the Holy Spirit can see through all of time and space. And it's like, it's obvious, which one should I trust? Like I'm looking through a keyhole, Holy Spirit sees all of time and space. It's like, it's not even really a question, <laughs> but, but sometimes we think it is a question and that's, it's kind of funny, but yeah, we just have to be willing to be wrong about everything we think we need. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> you know, it's amazing. You mentioned, uh, you mentioned magnitude and, and I, I just felt earlier today, just uh, actually, I heard this last night, just to bring my course book to, to, uh, to our, our show today. And yet I, I didn't know if I'd read or what it was. I just felt like I needed to bring it. And right, right before like the cameras came on and all of that, I just felt to kind of, like they would talk about, use like the course book as an oracle. Like, what would you have me see? Like, give me my daily bread. And so I just... I didn't even realize like I opened it. I was just like, all right, I'm going to open it in a moment. It, it just happened to like flip open. And guess what the section title is called? <laughs> Littleness versus magnitude. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no way. Come on. You can't be that good. Come on. You got to be off sometimes. <laughs> so I won't read it right now, but you get the point. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. I mean, that's been like my experience sometimes, just especially lately because even I, don't, I keep going ahead and I'd love to kind of go back but I'll just I'll just share this right now but during my recent travels in, in Europe I just I you know uh, the big kind of purpose of it for me underneath it all was I just wanted to develop this trust of the spirit that you know it was the spirit that had me not certain people not organization not anyone it was like the spirit was and kind upholding of me in that you know, even if I was afraid or resistant or whatever it was and doing something I'd never done before. I, I hate, like, I hated traveling. I was so afraid of it. And yet here I could feel it clearly, like, this is coming in. And, and it happened each time where I was at, like, kind of the edge of my faith and trust. Like, are you sure you're here, Spirit? Because I'm having a hard time hearing you, and I, I don't know what my next step is or I'm not sure what to do. Every time, like, right at, like, that moment where I thought I'd just, okay, I don't know. Like, I give up. And, like, boom, come right in. Someone would write to me and I had them in mind or, you know, you know, someone would hand me money. It was, it was just these miraculous things that just kept happening to me. And I was like, again, that same feeling like, no way. Or like I would have tears in my eyes, just drop like just in such gratitude. Like it's real. And I want to, you know, my prayer is to continuously be convinced. Like show me this. This is true. I mean, I'm not about blind faith. Screw that. <laughs> you know? I, I want an actual experience. I did not devote my life to this for nothing. You know, I didn't give it just a, oh, you know, I got nothing. 
Meta, well, which part, partly of that is true, but, but that's coming through more and more of an experience that nothing is like as good as this. And anytime I think it might be, it's, I just kind of hand it over to the spirit. Okay, show me that's not true. It's a convincing job and it's not my job to get to convince myself. It's to allow myself to be convinced with, through the miracles, through the joyous experience. <laughs> You know, through the mighty companions that are just gorgeous, <laughs> you know, beautiful beings. And I mean, I, I remember I see Nicolene there. I, I, was a, I was joining with her for almost a, a month at her place, and I remember talking about kind of mighty companions, and I just I felt like that was, I wanted to share just the preciousness of it. I just remember tears like coming down my face and just gratitude for the different parables that were coming back to my mind. And, yeah, we don't walk this alone. You know, that's, that's part of the reason I heard brothers in Christ. You know, this brotherhood doesn't mean just, you know, males. It's like, it's the sonship. It's a brotherhood. It's, just, it's a word of unity. And it's it's through coming together. It's through the relationship. It's, it's like that April on my uh, April. It's, it's through, yeah, <laughs> facing the ones that, you know, you might be afraid to face for whatever reason and, and seeing that there's a miracle underneath. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so a bit fired up about that. Yeah. Yeah, and about brothers in Christ. I just want to go back to self concept real quick because um like I said, <laughs> part of my self concept is um some kind of it it's been merging. Um, but for some reason the words like Christ and Jesus, maybe through past associations, didn't fit well with me. And it's been a merging process and I really feel like I um, more and more start to merge with Jesus in my mind. But I remember, um, yeah, when we were in high school and, <laughs> and we were both going through our, our starting our journey. And then um, what happened was Nicholas was really taking off with it. He was really going with the Spirit's plan. And, and uh, I remember one night, and I, I didn't want to yet. I really wanted to stay in this self-concept. And what I did was, with, with our group of friends, for me, my self-concept was really invested in my friends for one aspect of it. And I remember we were at this restaurant, um, Silver Diner, late at night, and Nicholas was there. And he was really going through all the miracles, and we were with our other friends. And, uh, and uh, I think, I don't remember if you had the long hair yet, but, <laughs> but we were just sitting in the restaurant, and you were just so happy. You were snapping your fingers, listening to the music, and I was just sitting there like, you know, and then uh, like, and then looking at my friends, and they were like looking awkward, and I'm as a reflection of my mind, and then, um, and then soon after, you went into community, and since my mind wasn't fully focused in saying a full yes to the Holy Spirit's plan, I was seeing reflections of doubt all the time in my friends about you, Nicholas. So, you know, things like. <laughs> <laughs> things like uh he's lost his marbles or he went crazy or like he's a jesus freak and basically that. things that really got to my self-concept and the ego was always like saying those things to me in the form of these friends and i basically because of the ego saying those things to me all the time i said okay i'm never joining <laughs> that spiritual community because I'm, it's the same thing's just going to happen to me. All my friends are going to think I've gone crazy. I'm some kind of Jesus freak, God lover. I don't know. Even though it, now it's like, oh, God lover, of course. Like, what's wrong with that? It's like, but, <laughs> but that went against my self-concept. So that's where I was like, no, no, no. And then, um, but eventually my mind did change and I did become ready to give the Holy Spirit a full yes and take my next step. And it was so miraculous because all the, all the doubt thoughts I had in my mind um, about taking those next steps and all my friends alienating me and all those kind of things, the Holy Spirit really worked with me and brought in so many miracles um, because what happened was I gave that full yes. And then at that point, I had stopped hanging out with all my friends because I realized what was the purpose of hanging out with them. Every time I do, I just fall into the same trap of talking about the same things over and over. And all they do is it's an unholy ego alliance and it's just um, joining an illusion and basically strengthening this self-concept in my mind of who I think I am.
So I was like, okay, I'm not hanging out with them anymore. And then I was just watching David videos for like eight hours a day and um, movie watchers guide all day. It's amazing. And that's all I did basically all day for a while after I quit the business and everything. And then what happened was the Holy Spirit started to prompt me to join, to meet up with these friends that I was trying to avoid because, because I didn't want to, you know, enforce that self-concept. And what happened was every time was a complete miracle. Um, before I would meet up with them, I would pray, I'm here only to be truly helpful. Um, I'm here to represent him who sent me that whole prayer, which I did before the show too. It's amazing. You should do it every time you walk into a room. But, <laughs> but <laughs> so I did that before I met up with all of my friends and each time was just such a holy, amazing encounter. Like I would meet up with friends that I knew since I was like 10 years old and all of a sudden they're like, oh, I ran into your aunt at, at the gym and she was telling me how you're into spirituality and then they would say, yeah, I'm actually really into, um, I don't know, meditation or spirituality or something like that. And I would be like, we never talked about that. You know, like it just, in my mind, they were even saying that. So basically, eventually we would actually start talking about metaphysics and the course and how this is a dream and all these metaphysical ideas that they were actually listening to. And I couldn't believe the words that were coming out of my mouth. They were just ripping through. And after each encounter, I felt my mind like kind of shake and then expand. And I felt like, wow, I just went a little bit past my self concept. And then that would happen over and over again. And, uh, yeah, that's just one example of how the Holy Spirit uses guidance to go beyond the self-concept. That's amazing. Well, I heard it might be time to wrap up soon, or we'll see. But I actually, I wasn't sure how much we'd share what we'd shared. I just realized, like, yeah, I think the quick thing I wanted to share, which has been a huge miracle of this for me, which was when I first met you, and that was in my second year of high school and and I didn't actually realize how much of a, kind of like a floater I was and it was only through you that actually I had my first kind of core group of friends for about a year. <laughs> um, and I just remember that the first time we met, you know, I would not have predicted that, you know, we'd be here now because I remember just like, I don't think I like this guy. <laughs> like, you just, you know, you felt wild or kind of, you know, you wear a hoodie in the mall and everything. I was like, who is this guy? <laughs> And we met through a mutual best friend. I remember just meeting up at the mall. I thought it was just going to be me and, you know, this mutual best friend. And then you showed up and I was like, oh, no. <laughs> and then to see just, you know, I won't go into all the details, but just over the next two years to just see actually that like more and more, I just started really like, I don't know, feeling you more like res resonating with you. And, and again, this was still before any spiritual context. And then, to just end up having you be like this angel that showed up in my life, mm -hmm. this, you know, unexpected gift, this, you know, unforeseen blessing, uh, just show up in my life right when I had as well, those, those anxiety attacks, those panic attacks, those phobias. I couldn't, I was afraid to leave the house or all, I always need music. I always need to know where the nearest bathroom was, all of that. And, and just having you at that time really be like, you know, like inception playing this idea with disappearance of the universe and, you know, Jesus this, God this, the world's not real. Like, okay, you know, that works for me right now because nothing else I'm doing is working. <laughs> and then actually having an experience of that because for, for me, truly, you were this way shower. You know, at the time I was, you know, I just, I was scared. And, and, and yet I saw you as this calm person who's willing to be authentic. And I mean, that's been a big healing and journey of mine still to now, this thing of authenticity and, and yeah, just grateful that, you know, you showed up in my life. So oh, I love you, brother. Yeah, I love you, Nicholas. <laughs> okay, so I think we're wrapping up now. I'm getting the signal. But um, <laughs> next week, join us next Sunday at 4 o'clock, same time. Um, we might go into more parables and miracles because I feel like we actually didn't even scratch the surface yeah, of what we originally felt like we wanted to share. Um, or it might be something different. We'll see. But uh, anyways, we'll have a show next Sunday at 4 o'clock, and we'd love to have you again. So thank you so much, all of you, for being here. Oh. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Andy.